we walk on floors every day. But this floor has meaning. This floor has scars. At times, it was awash with the blood of brave men, because it is not a floor. What did these planks survive and, and live through? This is the deck of a battleship, the USS Colorado. It is hallowed ground, if Teak could talk. And a piece of shrapnel hit him right here and came out over here, and I just lowered him to the deck. He was gone. It went right through his helmet. We all held, wore helmets. With Hemian, Moose to his shipmates, can still envision that World War II day when a young ensign was killed standing next to him. He never made it. Hemian was wounded twice. And we took two kamikazes on one engagement and one kamikaze after that. Gary Kuhar serves as the ship's historian. There's a list of killed in action. His father was a radio man aboard the Colorado who survived the war, but nearly 100 did not, as the Colorado service record reads like a resume of the Pacific Theater. From Tarawa to Iniwetok and Saipan and Tinian, Guam, Leyte, Luzon, Okinawa, Tokyo Bay. It probably saw more action than any other battleship in the war. Uh, one of the reasons why, because it wasn't damaged at the start of the war. That's because on December 7th, 1941, the day then President Franklin Roosevelt said would live in infamy, the USS Colorado was here at the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard in Bremerton. It couldn't be sunk like the USS Arizona in Oklahoma. The Colorado would soon see action. And while it wasn't there for the beginning of the war, it was there for the end. Anchored next to the then new battleship, USS Missouri and Tokyo Bay for the surrender ceremony, September 2nd, 1945. But the story doesn't end well. It was back to Bremerton for a life in mothballs and finally to the scrapper's torch on Harbor Island. It's a hard thing. Hemian still keeps copies of a Seattle Times article from 1960 showing the massive job of taking the Colorado apart. It's a heartbreaking thing, really. I'm sure it was for a lot of people. But, okay. but the scrappers didn't get everything. Yeah, definitely a beautiful wood. There was all that gorgeous deck tea. It's used condition, so there is like dance and things. Much of it went to Boeing, where it was displayed in a cafeteria for decades. But now Boeing's donated it to the USO at SeaTac. This side's pretty much going to be done, and it's going to go all the way down around that corner. OK, make yourself at home. The deck installed in a newly remodeled haven for military members and their families seeking respite from grueling travel. Oh, yeah, we've got them out the door and down the hall. Yeah, it's going to be nice. I mean, you see the burn marks. It's like, well, you know. This was really used, you know, I mean, it's, it's a lot of stories. Guam, Saipan, and Tinian, and we got all shot up then. That's when we had to come back to Bremen to get repaired, you know. Sailors like Davy Jones survived the war and kept on living. At 91, I ain't too bad. And he and 15 others have come to SeaTac to take a last look. Probably had a few splinters taken out of it. It's beautiful that uh, we still have this and, and that it's being taken care of. Colorado vets formed an association a few years after the war to remember and stay in touch. A group of more than 2,000 back then has dwindled to around 200 now. The hardiest are here. Well, no, I was going to be here anyway because it's the, we're decommissioning our association. Can you make it, Alan? Yeah, I was. There's not enough of us left to continue on to have another reunion. So. It represents a, an emotional thing because our shipmates bled on these, de these decks. We saw 94 of them killed and died, died on these decks. It was a tremendous ship. And the camaraderie on that ship was, you just can't believe it. You may never see it in the fast-paced world of modern air travel. Hello there, how are you? But for those who now serve, Good. 
they will be the ones to walk the deck of this storied ship, as their grandfathers did some seven decades ago. I think it's a direct, tangible link to the sacrifice that that entire generation made to securing our safety and freedom. With photographer Eric Sander, Glenn Farley, King 5 News.